What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. I'm actually fresh in from Bozeman, Montana, where I was at most of this week visiting with my business partner, Yard Mastery, actually has an office there, as well as our friends from My Soil made the trip over, and we all went out and supported a nonprofit that works with special forces operators called Big Sky Bravery. We went and supported them in their Freedom Golf Tournament. But of course, you guys know that while I'm there, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun getting into some lawns and seeing what's going on. And because Bozeman is a boom town and there's a lot of new construction there, there's also a lot of really cool lawns to look at. Check out what I found just yesterday morning, right at sunrise. All right, so here's a good example for you. This is like an industrial park, but you can see they have some pretty nice grass. You can actually see here, pretty nice domination line. So obviously this is being cared for, fertilized. You can see they got the irrigation running. I've been watching it and it seems to be running pretty well. The coverage looks good, but I keep seeing a lot of weird splotches all throughout. And by the way, I'll see this in all the residential lawns exactly like this. And we're gonna do a little detective work. All right, so when you're playing lawn detective, you gotta think about what's been going on around you. What's the weather been like? And in Bozeman, it's actually been pretty mild. 50s at night, low 80s, high 70s during the day zero humidity pretty much and actually patterns of rain i was there for four days and it rained three of those four days so they've got it pretty much perfect here right now mild conditions as far as temperatures go zero humidity plenty of rain plus all of the lawns that you see here are all irrigated so the first thing we can look at and again i've told you i've been watching the irrigation here this zone just shut off and the irrigation coverage is good it runs for like 20 minutes i didn't do a tuna can test on it so 20 minutes doesn't mean a lot but it feels good. It looks like it's doing well, but you can see. I mean, the coverage, it goes all up in there. Now let's go over here. This is another zone that just started running and you can see there's an irrigation head right there. And look at how beautifully green around here it is. And this land slopes that way. So any extra water that's bubbling around that is sloping down that way. So kind of strange, right? We've got these perfect conditions, yet the only areas that are really staying nice and green are the ones where the irrigation heads, you know, they probably drain out during the day. So those spots probably stay wet for several hours. And then also notice up on the elevated part, up on the hill where there was probably some fill dirt brought in, that's also faring a lot better than the flattened off lower areas where all the splotches are. So that kind of tells me something and you can see this is going back here, good overlap, still brown. By the way, this thing here for the dog, uh, clean up your dog thing, you can see how it's green underneath because the sprinkler, the irrigation hits it and the water flows down. So underneath gets more water. So detective work, very simple, would say one issue we have is we need more water, but we still have splotchiness throughout. So that doesn't explain everything. Let me Let me show you. Here's another example right here, right? See how it's all green around the sprinkler head and all the water kind of flows that way. So not enough water, enough water, but it's just weird that it comes out this way. And I'm gonna show you why in a minute. I think I discovered why, but notice here, right? Around this box, what's always around boxes and stuff in construction? Think about that while we point this out. This has nothing to do with this current talk, but it's just interesting. You can see here, this grass back here is all burned out because the heat during the day, the sun blasts on this metal siding right here and the radiating heat just kills the grass. This is all irrigated back here, but it just can't live from that radiating heat from that white hot metal siding there. Oh, sun's coming up. All right, let's go back over here now and do a little bit more detective work on why some of these spots are splotchy like this. We know some of it means more irrigation. See, so here's the corner. See how strange that is? It's nice and green right here on this corner. And again, there's a zone that runs right up through there. They all run the same. And then all of a sudden you can see it just struggles like right here, it's crazy. So what is that? Well, what can we see around us that might tell us what's underneath here? Cause I'm not gonna dig in there. Oh, well they just happen to be doing some construction right across the street. This one just had irrigation installed. So that means it's time for sod very soon. And what are we seeing all throughout? Can you see what that is? How do you think grass is gonna grow on that? How about that pile right there? How do you think grass is gonna grow on that? Sure, they'll come in with a rake and they'll smooth it out, but there ain't nobody gonna pick those rocks out of there, guaranteed. Maybe, maybe these large ones, possibly. How do you think grass is gonna grow in that pile of rocks right there? How do you think that's gonna do? Okay, so 
that would be a splotch, probably a brown, and then it probably would be green all the way around. We have an irrigation head right there. Who knows, right? But you see what I'm saying? Pile of rocks, pile of rocks. And by the way, the piles of rocks are all around where they dug out for the irrigation. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you that's underneath all of this? Yeah, rocks. And probably going to be more concentrated in some areas, less concentrated in others. So over there, what do you have? You have rocks underneath all that sod. More concentrated rocks over here, less concentrated rocks over there. Still don't believe me? Still think I'm not a very good detective? All right, well, let's go right over here to a property that's finished and adjacent to this one. And let's see what the effect of those rocks is. Big pile of rocks. Now this has been finished for a couple of years. Look at that beautiful grass and then, oh, probably a pile of rocks. Probably a pile of rocks. Probably piles of rocks. You see what I'm saying? That's what that is. And so you're seeing it over there. You're seeing it here. And in a few months, you're probably gonna be seeing it right over here in this new construction too. That's why I always tell you when you have things that are weird and you can't figure it out, the first thing you should always do is dig. So this is what can happen when you're in an area where you're repurposing something that's been pasture land for hundreds of years. It's a naturally rocky soil and you have to get up track homes really, really fast. You know, if you think about it, they have codes, building codes for things like plumbing and electrical and even the grade of the land, there's codes for that and those are things that'll be inspected. But when it comes to turf quality and the rockiness of the soil and how sod is gonna do in that rocky soil, no codes exist, nobody's checking up on it and so it seems like nobody really cares. Okay, so right here we're gonna get a really good example of what I'm talking about. So here's a house that is not yet finished, right? And so what do we have, right? We have people that have to get in here and get out of here. And what do we have to help them? Pile of rocks. Now just picture that, right? And then you can see not so many rocks, but still rocks and then pile of rocks, piles of rocks. Does this look like the dead spots that I just showed you in the lawns? See how that is? Now, obviously there's gonna be a driveway right here, but you can see the rocks are not only in the area where the driveway are, is. Go up here, there's piles of rocks right on the side over there. If you go over here, there's piles of rocks here. There won't be a garage over here. Piles of rocks, piles of rocks, piles of rocks. This is the front yard right here. So now you can see, right? You can see this is exactly the same exact kind of look that you get when you look at those lawns, those dead spots in the lawns piles of rocks. And I know you wanna know, what can you do if you have this problem? Well, the good news is, is that the areas that are the worst, they reveal themselves. So the only thing you can do, you have a bad foundation here. You, you can't build on a bad foundation, right? You just can't do it. So you literally have to pull your sod back and you have to dig those areas out, screen out the rocks, put the native soil back, and then just wait for more areas down the road to reveal themselves. That's really all you can do when you start with such a poor foundation like this. One thing's for sure though, if you're in new construction and you've been planted on super rocky ground like this the one thing you can't do is make mistakes with the basics some of us that have a better foundation we can get away with poor mowing for a few stints here and there we can get away with not enough water for a few weeks here and there but you with rocky soil everything is different for you you don't have that forgiveness you don't have that fudge factor there for you and so you have to stay on top of the watering the mowing and the fertilizing to keep that lawn strong and running as good as possible but again you're just gonna have to dig things out over time. One more thing for those of you looking for a little bit more content, I did update the podcast this week. It's all about lawn seeding. We go through all the different strategies, answer a bunch of questions, look at it in different ways because I know that that's something that's coming up. So that's called Lawns Across America on all the podcast platforms and I'll link the YouTube version in the description below. With that, I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Again, it's all about playing lawn detective. Look at what's around you, look at what you're dealing with, look at what others are doing and eventually you can start to figure things out and that's when you really get good at your lawn care. So once again, hope you guys have a great rest of your week and hope this video has been helpful to you. Leave me comments and questions in the description below and I'll see you in the lawn.